Evening everybody. Well, um, last night we took a look at adding and subtracting um, polynomials. Well, tonight we're going to take a look at how we multiply these polynomials. Um, again, it's very important that you understand that the monomial is just a big number and when we multiply it by another number, uh, it follows all the rules that you've learned up to this point with multiplying. Um, so let's go forward, we'll look at some examples, we'll take a look at why multiplying polynomials works, uh, some methods, and um, give you some practice. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so the way I'd like to start is by just taking a look at a, a monomial, 10, that's being multiplied by another monomial, 10. Okay, and of course this is very, very easy monomials, and we know that 10 times 10 equals 100. And what we're going to use today um, to solve when we multiply monomials is something that uh, we call the box method. And I just wanted to prove to you that indeed it works with real numbers. So I think everyone would agree that 10 times 10 is 100. And here we have 6, I mean 4 plus 6, which is 10, and we have 3 plus 7, which is 10. So let's take a look if by breaking this apart we still end up with an area of 100. So 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 7 is 28. 6 times 3 is 18. And 6 times 7 is 42. If we add all those up, I think you will discover that we get... 100. Okay, and you can check that yourself if you'd like. Let's try this again with our 10 by 10, but instead of writing 10 by 10, we're going to write 12 minus 2, which is indeed 10, and then 6 plus 4. 12 times 6 is 72. 12 times 4 is 48. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12 and negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 and we can add these up very easily 60 plus 40 equals 100 so this is what we call the box method where we take components of the monomial and we multiply them together so obviously we don't need to do this when we're multiplying 10 by 10 we can multiply 10 by 10 but when we run across a problem that looks like this now all of a sudden we need some method for doing that and I think I, I hope that I've proven to you that by breaking this apart we're still getting the same result by multiplying 10 by 10 or 4 plus 6 times 3 plus 7 we end up with the same area or the same multiplication situation of 100 so how do we use this well here we have 4x squared which is a monomial and it's multiplying against x plus 5, which is a binomial. And so we're just going to write the two parts. Just like we wrote 6 plus 4 before, now here we have x plus 5. Indeed, we couldn't combine x plus 5 if we wanted to. And we have 4x squared. So 4x squared times x. Well, let's take a look at that. That's 4x squared times x. Using the exponent rule, we know that's equal to 4x cubed. 4x squared times 5, so we have 5 times 4x squared. 5 times 4 is 20, so we have 20x squared. So 4x squared times x plus 5 is 4x cubed plus 20 x squared. Alright, they told me to simplify again. That's the word you'll most probably see. Simplify 3x squared times x squared plus 1. I'm going to use my box again. x squared and 1. And I'm going to put the plus sign there so I don't get confused. 3 times x, 3x squared times x squared. Well, let's do a little shortcut here. We know that's 3. We know that's x. We have 2, 2, we're multiplying, so that must be 4. 3 times 1 is 3. Anything times 1 is always itself. And so 3x to the 4th plus 3x squared. 
squared. And I hope you can see this box method just keeps your life very easy. As we get more and more components, we can add to that. We make sure that we have positives and negatives. We make sure that we're multiplying through by everything and we're combining our terms when we're all done. So up until this point we haven't had to combine anything. Well what happens when life gets a little bit more complicated? Now we have x plus 3 and negative 2x plus 4. Same thing, x plus 3, negative 2x plus 4. So we have x times negative 2x, which gives me negative 2x squared. That's just like this, negative 2x times x, 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 x squared. 4 times x is 4x, again, 4 times x is 4x. 3 times negative 2x is negative 6x, and then finally, 3 times 4 is 12. And here we have to be careful. We're going to combine our terms. We have negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 6x plus 12. And you can see I just made sure and I put all my terms together. Here I actually have a negative 6x and a positive 4x, so I have to combine those using the addition and subtraction rules we learned last night. And I end up with negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 12. Okay, these don't have to be simple linear equations. They could be something as complicated as 3x squared plus 6 and 2x squared minus 3. 2 times 3 is 6. x squared x squared is x to the fourth. Again, I hope you're seeing that. It's 2 times x times x times 3 times x times x. 2 times 3 is 6 and x to the fourth. Negative 3 times 3, 9x squared, 12x squared, and negative 18. And we're going to write everything down again, making sure that we include everything, minus 9x squared, plus 12x squared, so I'm going to put that underneath, minus 18, combine all my like terms, and I have simplified. Now, before we go on to that, remember, it doesn't matter. I could have 3x squared plus 6x minus 2y plus 3y. I could have all those in a box. And I could have them multiplying times 2x squared, 3x plus 6. I could have a, I could have a trinomial versus and a polynomial, and we could multiply all of those. 3 times this, this times this, this times this. And we could fill in all of these. So we can go very, very complicated. We'll do some of those tomorrow. But for now, I just want you to know that it's not limited to just a monomial times a binomial or a binomial times a binomial. We can make this as complicated or as easy as we want. Which brings me to this point, is if I give you a monomial times a monomial, it's just 6xy to the fourth, times 3xy squared, x squared to y, which as we already know, we know how to multiply that. 6 times x times y to the fourth times 3 times x squared times y, which gives me 18x 
to the third y to the fifth. None of these rules that we've learned up to this point have changed. Okay, so we I'm going to ask you tonight to go do on con five problems, same as last night. Doesn't matter if you get five in a row correct, I just want you to try five problems. Show your work and bring it in. I'm also going to make another video tomorrow night on a method called FOIL which will help you multiply a binomial times a binomial. And it uses the box method but this is just a little bit of a shortcut. So tonight I want you to go do multiplying polynomials. There's a link waiting for you and we will meet tomorrow and make sure we've got all this down. Good night.